Okay, peoples, this is part five of the failover cluster high availability application server configuration series. And we're just about to begin using that new virtual hard drive that we installed and um, carve it up into some separate virtual SCSI drives to be used by the SQL server. So, I'm on the domain controller of our network, and I am going to start the software we just installed, the Microsoft iSCSI tar target software. And what you have to do first is you create a target by naming it. We're going to create the quorum drive. Whoops. And description is quorum good enough for me. Now, what we're going to do here, it says identifiers allow iSCSI target to identify the iSCSI initiator requesting access. Now the iSCSI initi initiation software resides on every server and when the servers request connection, what we're looking for are the fully qualified names of the um, servers on the network that will be allowed to connect to this software. So we will add the iSCSI qualified name or you can use the DNS name like node 1 or node 2. I'm going to use IP address. One of the nodes, node 1 is 192.68.59.130. Okay add IP node 2 is 192.168.59.131 <coughs> Warning. You have assigned multiple initiators to this iSCSI target. Unless the server is in a cluster or uses a SAN file system, which it does, you should only allow one initiator access to the SCSI target. Are you sure? Yes, we're sure. We're setting up a cluster. We need it. Next. Finish. Okay, quorum. Now, under devices, we need to actually create a virtual disk to attach to that file name. Welcome to the create wizard. Here we go. And I'm going to put it on the E drive which is that extra virtual drive we just added. Now, if you read this, you will have to manually enter the full name of the file, including the extension, which in this case is going to be VHD. A lot of this software is this way. It will not automatically attach the extension, and it will give you an error until you do. So I'm going to create quorum.vhd virtual hard disk next. Now you determine the size. The quorum will be 1 gig and it's in megabytes that's 1024 megabytes. Disk description quorum iSCSI targets that can access this virtual disk quorum finish. Now you see our virtual disk here properties. Quorum. Quorum VHD. Very good. Now, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is demonstrate the concept. It takes longer to perform a, um, a, f a a validation of the cluster when you've got several, several hard drives. So I actually kind of want to just demonstrate the proof of concept of installing uh, one single drive. We have to invoke the iSCSI initiator first, though, before these member servers will connect. The Microsoft iSCSI service is not running. The service is required. To start the service now, click Yes. And I want to do that on both of them.
Okay, this is the iSCSI initiator and what you have to do in order to find your SCSI, your iSCSI 3 persistent connections click on the discovery tab the discover portal will be the IP address of the server giving you the connections note the uh, application port then you go back to targets. What targets does it see? It sees this target. Calls it inactive. Connect to it. This is asking if you want this connection to persist or return every time you restart your server. And you do. It is now connected. So now if you go to the disk management of node 1 This new virtual SCSI drive that we just connected to, it very often takes a little while for this to populate. The new hard drive you will see is unformatted. This UDF, that's a CD or DVD. So you have to bring it online. You have to format it just like any other disk. This is the new one gigabyte quorum drive. Initialize it leave it MBR. Just as a note, an MBR drive is the only type of drive that um, VMware at this stage of the game will will play well with. And what I mean is what I mean is if you wanted to virtualize a uh, physical hard drive, VMware will only virtualize master boot record hard drives and not globally unique identifier partition table hard drives. So stick with MBR if you're going to be moving these around because if you go and set up your cluster with uh, GPT drives, guess what? You can't virtualize it. I know. <laughs> it's what I ran into. I had a whole setup that I couldn't move. Anyway, moving right along. Node 2 now needs to be joined to this uh, discover portal. Enter the IP 168.59.129 and you won't have to re-add this IP every time. There's the target. Connect to it. Yes, persist. And uh, in this case, when you go to disk management, what do you think you're going to find? Well, because we just formatted the drive on the other server, this is already formatted. It comes up as the quorum drive. Alright. But you did have to bring it online within the system. Okay. My intention here is just to quickly go through the validation test again, just to demonstrate um, the difference that having the SCSI drive on will make validate. Like I said, the validation test is used for troubleshooting and testing. Oops. Dummy. Okay, I'm going to pause it for now until it's done. Okay, I uh, started recording. Is the arbitration speed and everything should improve but we'll find out in a minute. Bringing it on again before the test is completed, but um, when we have like five or six different disks, I'll uh, show you this test, and you'll get to see it bounce back and forth between both the nodes, and it'll bring one disk online, 
drop another disk. Um, it's testing the failover ability. Simultaneous failover of one, two, three, five, all the disks, whatever. It's pretty neat. Okay, it's almost completely done. <clears throat> Look at that, not even any warnings. Just as soon as you put one uh, persistent iSCSI 3 connection in there with one disk, testing has completed successfully. The configuration is suitable for clustering. It doesn't even mention any warnings. You look down here on the right, you'll see the word success. Let's look for a warning. Nothing. Not a thing. The basic setup is good. Okay, so just as soon as we added a uh, SCSI drive, made a huge difference in uh, the outcome of the validation test. It was able to function with the one original drive and it said, meh, okay, but I got some issues with it, so much happier with SCSI. Alright, so now what we need to do <clears throat> is go back to the domain controller and I will just be explicit with this so you get to see the process. What we're going to do is create a couple more targets. Create an iSCSI target. We're going to create a drive called SQL, SQL data. SQL data. This will be the drive where we store the bulk of uh, the actual database. The identifier, you're telling it what targets are allowed, and again, this will be the IPs of the nodes. Yes. Okay. Next. Finish. Now we've got to create the actual drive, create a virtual disk. Now this one I'm going to give more space to. I'm going to give it 10 gigs. Okay. We're going to browse to the drive we want. You can see the quorum there. But all we want is the E. We don't need the quorum file name. SQL data dot VHD. Next. Size, it's going to be 10 times bigger, so it's 1024 plus a 10 plus a 0. Okay, that's 10 gigs. SQL data. Add SQL data. Finish. Alright, now I'm going to go here. If you refresh, on node 1 in the iSCSI initiator, you see the new target. It is inactive. Connect. Make it persistent. Go into disk management and bring it online. Well, you're going to have to format it too. Be explicit. Try not to rush ahead of yourself and forget what you are doing. Okay. You can rush ahead and make all these drives, but if you forget one or two of them and don't format them, you're just be methodical in what you do. Keep it in MBR so it works with VMware in all respects. New simple volume, yes. Next. Next. I'm going to call it SQL data. Perform a quick format. Finish. Yes. I'm going to go to node 2. Same thing in the iSCSI initiator. Refresh. Connect to it. Yes, it's OK. And you see the drive appear right away. And you bring it online. And there's SQL data. Bring it online. Quorum. OK. Go back to DC. Let's make the next one. <clears throat> what do we do? Go to iSCSI targets, create a target. This one's going to be SQL logs, where the log files will be kept. SQL logs. Next. Identifier of the machines connecting. IP address 192.168.59.1.1. .1 
Okay.